So I don't have an intro for this one because I started building these built-ins way back at the beginning of October. Um, and they, I just installed them in February. I thought they were going to be done in November, but I had a t um, the customer had a ton of delays because it's new construction. So these were sitting around the shop for quite a bit. That's why this footage is, is rather old. But as I start all these built-ins, I'm going to be cutting down sheet goods. Um, these are very specific measurements, and I actually lost a little bit of the beginning of the footage I have showing how I make the base. And there's very thick molding in this room. It's about seven and a half inches is the size of the baseboard. So all I did was I took, um, I think two by tens, and I cut them down to 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 make the base and framed it out similar to how you you would a wall with just some some pieces in between and all of these cabinets are going to sit on top of that base so as you could see in the video i was just cutting my pieces down to size the bottom of these cabinets were about 18 inches deep when all this was said and done um, i had to account for the face frame going on the front so i made these a little bit thinner and then as you could see on the radial arm saw so I'm cutting these down I was just shy of being able to cut these with one cut so you could see I'm gonna have to flip them all and on the bottom there's going to be uh, four four cabinets with two drawers in each one so that's basically what I'm gonna start in the beginning of this this piece so I ordered a bunch of plywood I think I ended up ordering a little over 10 sheets because I ordered plywood for another project I was doing at the same time and a lot of them are all different dimensions this is to be expected with with the quality of materials these days so all I did was I made sure that I, I, I put the, the dimensions together in a sense. So some of these sheets were about three quarters of an inch. Some of them were a little thinner. So you could see I made this little reference stick and all I did was I found the pieces that were the same size and I made sure to use those um, it together. So I wasn't using thinner stock and thicker stock to make the shelves and it ended up working out fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is make all the cuts. I'm putting um, a bottom side dado, a top side rabbit, and then a, a middle dado which will hold um, the piece for the shells. So at the top here you could see I'm cutting a rabbit. I, sometimes I don't go all the way through for this because you could see in the inside I don't put a full sheet of plywood at the top. I put like three inch or four inch strips at the top. But because these are drawers you'll never see this. So I decided to just make my life a little bit easier and do a full rabbit on the top. So that's what that is. If these were cabinets where you opened it sometimes I end up chiseling, uh, cutting just four inch uh, rabbits on the top and I chiseled the curved part on the back makes it a little bit nicer. So then I can move the fence and standard for anything that's going to set on the ground like this for cabinets. I come I leave a little bit of a quarter inch foot on the bottom. That is because you do not want this entire base sitting on your your 2 by 10 base. It will rock. If you just have two little pressure points, then then it, it reduces the the um, likelihood of these cabinets rocking back and forth. So that is why the bottom of these I always come up a little bit. So then the middle had to be perfectly in the center. So you could see I marked my face frame as an inch. So I marked out my face frame. That's what these extra marks are. And then I can mark for my middle. I make sure that these are exactly, they're a, a give or take about 12 and a quarter. If it's off by a 16th of an inch, the eye won't notice that. And then I cut my middle dado down the center. So the way that I like to build these cabinets, as you can see, are with rabbits and dados holding everything together. Some people make these with pockets, hole screws that works as well especially for something like a built-in where this is permanently going to be attached to the wall and attached to each other that's more than a substantial way to make cabinets i've just been doing it this way for so long i find it a little bit sturdier but mainly i find it much easier when it comes time to glue them up and square them up when you have this sort of joinery so at this point i split my stack into four and four and i put the the rabbit on the back for for my plywood backer. I'm using a half inch backer for this. I use half inch backers for all this stuff because I have to transport, th transport them. So there's a lot of um, torsion applied to these, moving them to and from the space. So I like a little bit more of a substantial backer 
but some people, especially if you're building this in your space, you could probably get away with a quarter inch backer. But honestly, quarter inch plywood and half inch plywood is about the same price these days. So going a little bit thicker will not hurt anyone. So then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna cut my shelves. You can see I'm just ripping off a little piece of material and then I could cross cut them on the table saw. My cross cut sled isn't wide enough to do this with that. So this is not the safest cut when you have a large amount of material canter levered off the side. Um, but I've done this enough that as long as you do this slowly and you apply pressure in the right spots, it becomes much safer. And by the time you cut two shelves, then it's a pretty standard cut at this point. But just make sure you can see I kind of made a stack of wood. So I had this um, held up on the side. This is a cut I usually make on the radial arm saw, but I designed this to use the least amount of plywood as possible. So cutting them lengthways like that, it would have been too long for the radial arm saw. And then with the leftover pieces, like I said, I'm making those four inch slats that will go on the top of the cabinet. Like I said, I don't use full sheets of plywood. It just makes the, the top side unnecessarily heavy if you, if you do it that way. So this is all scrap left over. So that becomes pretty convenient. On builds like this, you're usually buying a lot of plywood and you have a, a lot of leftover chunks. And so far, this is my, my stack. I have all of my sides, all of the shelves, and then all of the, the top pieces. So at this point, I'm going to um, dry fit these together. So the way I like to do this is I drill holes, drilling holes through this side of the board perfectly aligns them on the other side of the board so you don't have to do any sort of measurements. There's no guesswork. And then I countersink the back sides. Now this is a wall to wall built in so you'll never see the top, bottom, um, the sides or the back of this. So I can put this together using screws, which is pretty nice. Sometimes there's an exposed side and you have to be make sure not to put any screws in it. But this one, I don't have any problem. And then I could dry fit everything together, set them up. That's the base I was talking about that I don't have footage of, very simple. Um, this is about 14 feet long, so I had to make it in two sections so I could get it into the house. But it's about seven um, and a quarter tall by about 17 deep. And then all of my cabinets are gonna sit on top of that. And then the baseboard in the space will hide the front edge of, of that, uh, that bottom piece. So like I said, those are set up. At this point, I'm going to cut all my backers. This is half inch maple veneer ply. So I ripped off, because this fence only goes to about 26 inches a lot of times on these wider pieces, I end up cutting the, the smaller side. And then I could cut the backer. Once again, like I said, this is not the safest cut. The edge of this is actually sitting on top of these cabinets at this point. It worked out nicely that they were about the exact same height as the table saw. So I could use those on the side. And then I could just go through cut all these once they were cut to length and now I'm cutting them to width and I could put them in place on the back side of my, my bottom cabinets. Sometimes they will bind so you could see I, I stop the saw instead of forcing it through and I just cut the bottom piece with a hand saw. This is one of the reasons sometimes you will see me wearing headphones but usually when I'm using the power tools the music is off because you'll be able to hear the, the tools under stress and you could take proper actions from, from that point. And you can see how the backer fits perfectly um, on those pieces. So that is going to be all of those four cabinets lined up. You can see there's gonna be fairly big wide drawers because the bottom of this is going to be holding filing cabinets. So for the face frame, I usually attach this stuff with splines, but I was recently there's a video on here of myself cutting down a cabinet and the way they attach their face frames were with rabbits on the cabinets and then grooves on the face frame. And I was wanted to try that on this because it will save on having to buy spline material and I thought it would be a little bit easier to do. So I set up the table saw so I got a perfect quarter inch by three eighths of an inch uh, rabbit on there. I'm going to go through and put that on the front side of all of my pieces. Um, spoiler alert, I really like this technique. I prefer it over splines. So this is how I'm going to be attaching face frames going forward. 
So you can see I'm just taking my pieces, I'm making sure I'm sending them through so that the groove is on the inside edge of all of my all of my pieces. And this was pretty easy before I finally glued these together. I just sent all of these through. I did the first two you can see vertically, but after I, I tested to make sure that was okay, you can see it's basically just a front side rabbit, which, which is a little bit thinner than the back side rabbit for the backer. Um, I thought it'd be easier to do this flat. So I changed the dimensions and the, the setup of the dado sack and the saw, and I sent all of my panels through um, flat. Obviously, like I said, because they're going to be on opposite sides, some of these will get sent through front side first, some of them will get sent through back side first, very similar to how you cut the backs. You can't send them all through the same way or you'll have four identical panels. You really need four panels for the left hand side and four panels for the right hand side. And then I have to do the exact same thing to one of the toppers because the face frame will hit one of the toppers. And I'll also have to do the exact same cut on the middle shelf because the face frame will also go across um, that middle shelf. But this was much easier. I didn't have to worry about orienting them any sort of proper way. I just sent through my four shelves and my four tops. So at this point I could glue all of these up. So pretty standard process. I'm using just glue and screws to put these together. Once I have it roughly put together, I can measure my diagonals on the back side, square everything up. It's really important these are square, especially since I'm going to be doing drawers. Um, and then I, I basically just glue all four of these up. The one, th one of the th reasons that I, um, that I use a, a heavier backer or backer in general, I know some people make these without backers, is because the backer really helps square up the whole cabinet. It just makes it more stable. Usually if people want uh, things without backers, I recommend they add one. It just, it just makes a much sturdier piece of furniture. So you can see I'm just going through and adding the tops, and then I could put it on its front, measure my diagonals, and then you could see when I put the backer on, it is a little off and I could hammer in place and you could kind of, if you're looking close, you could see it shifts the cabinet. And then at this point, I know it's square. And then I put some chalk lines on the back so I know exactly where to put some holes and I, I attach the backer. Now you can glue this in place. This whole thing's plywood. It's dimensionally stable. I usually keep these loose because sometimes in the space there's electrical and stuff you have to worry about so sometimes it's easier to be able to take the backer off and you could see all my rabbits lined up and this video is already getting pretty long so in the next video i will start working on the face frames for this but you can see my verticals these are perfectly square there's no big gaps or anything